you, you, you open the door to another conversation. But one thing I, I wanted to hit on here that was important is you're saying there are federally, state, and you know, so nationally, state, and locally subsidized programs for first-time home buyers. Yes, they are, and there there's also local city down payment programs, right? Yeah, it varies by cities. You would have to look at the city you're looking in. Most of them do have income limits, um, and some of them don't have income limits. But depending on your income, will depend on how much they give you for and, assistance. And and I I don't want to go too deep into this, but I think it bears understanding. When we talk about in, income limits, what the municipalities say is there's something called the adjusted medium income. And so this is an important concept because adjusted medium income for the Boston area is around $80,000. And so when we talk about income limits, there are products that go up to 120% AMI, correct? Correct. And so 120% AMI is $96,000. You're almost making $100,000 as a single filer, a single tax filer. It's more if you're a two member, if you're two people buying. Correct. Correct. So Correct. we're not talking about someone making twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. These are people that can be making six figures as a couple. Correct. Yeah. Right. Really important. And and I think it bears stress that the governments want us to be home buyers. They're subsidizing it because they know of the benefits for you and for the towns and cities when people own their real estate versus rent their real estate. So just, just really an important, but you have cities, gov you have governments who are fighting for you to become a home buyer and help trying to create opportunities for you to become a home buyer, right? right? Yeah, I mean, it's important for cities to have, you know, that pride of ownership, home ownership. Um, they want you to purchase. They want you to, up, you know, maintain the property. They want you to be, you know, a, responsible taxpayer for that community and have pride in it. So it's important. I mean, as Jason said that, you know, they're subsidizing these rates, they're subsidizing the mortgage insurance that you're paying on, on the, on the mortgage. So, you know, as a first time home buyer, you know, you need to take advantage of this. You're only a first time home buyer once, right? So it, it behooves you to use one of these programs the first time when it's available, because, you know, for you to become a first time, and I say once, Technically, if you don't own any property, a lot, a lot of these programs for three years, then you become a home buyer, first time home buyer again. But that's not usually the case. Most most buyers buy either buy and then sell and buy immediately again or accumulate real estate. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's available. It's there for you. It's there to help you. So let's take advantage of it. And, and really talking to you is the right place to start. I think. There are so many opportunities out there. I know I have trouble keeping track of them all. And, and this is what I do for a living is make sure I know those products. You as the professional who focuses on that, I mean, that, that, there's just too many variables here and, and, and you're the one who knows how to put them all, all the puzzle pieces together. Um, yeah, exactly. Like you mentioned, um, you know, the income limits, those change yearly, right? Guidelines change monthly depending on the product right so yeah you just have to you know get into the into a situation where you're, you're speaking to us the sooner the better so that we can kind of guide you once again that roadmap i keep using that roadmap because everybody's different right everybody has different income credit score down payment so that map might be different from for everybody it might be a month it might be a year right but you have to start, the sooner you start, the sooner you know where you are, the sooner you know how to get to where you want to be. Awesome. To simplify to simplify also, just to, to bring it down a little bit on, on some of these terms that we keep using that might uh, go over your head. Why, you know, does the government or why do, you, you know, cities, towns, or these programs, why are they in effect? Because primarily, if you're going to be living in a house, you're going to be taking care of it. Um, and the cities and towns and municipalities want to see this. They don't want to see a, a house that uh, is going to be sitting on the market. I mean, not in this market anyways, but they typically, if you're going to be buying a house for the first time, you're going to paint it. You're going to take care of it. You're going to, you know, plant flowers in front of it. You're going to make, make it look nice. And 
of course they want first time home buyers that are going to be treating these houses with love, care and respect and growing their families. And of course, it just makes these towns and uh, just look nicer, right? When you're driving through these neighborhoods, and you're like, wow, wow, that's a nice house. That's nice. People are living there. And that's why they're um, incentivizing uh, these programs. And actually, George can tell you, if you it's a primary residence mortgage, uh, the rates are better. Um, and that's because of it again. And they know and these lenders and lending institutions know if you're going to be living in the house you're going to be taking care of it and taking care of the investment yeah i mean there's also towns um that will give you a tax benefit on that real yep. estate tax if you own the property correct so correct you're a landlord so the taxes you know x five thousand dollars if you're a landlord if you're an investor it's five thousand dollars if you're a homeowner it might be three right so these are additional benefits that you might not even consider that will make that mortgage payment more affordable for you in the long term. Yeah, I think it's really important. It's funny, and there is a benefit here to the city and town for doing this. Um, the NAR statistic is it's about $85,000 in business is generated when a transaction, when a home sale, especially a primary home, but when a home sale happens, uh, inspections, um, painting, furniture. You just think about the little things that happen during a move. You put all that together. This is about $85,000. Now that doesn't mean it's necessarily an expense to the home buyer that happens on every purchase. Um, but it is, so, it is kind of that statistic that says people typically buy and then they invest in their home, right? Because mm -hmm. they are getting that return on the investment back. 